the diamond I realized the that I'm the This is one time I'm wearing the The Empathy Museum presents A Mile in My Shoes. These shoes are lightweight basic trainers. They're sketches and are just classic black running shoes with bobbly soles and vibrant pink insoles. They have zigzaggy stitching around the sides of the trainers and just normal black laces. They're size 7 and I think they could be worn by a man or a woman. These shoes belong to Katie Hodgkins. This is her story. These past 18 months I've been learning about things that people can do that I can't. I have something called aphantasia. It means I've got no imagination and there's no pictures in my mind. It, it was literally 12 o'clock at night and I was just looking at something on my phone. I was like, oh, what's this? And read about it and I was like, oh my God, I've got this. It, it blew my whole world apart, really. So I struggle with kind of putting myself in other people's positions and I, I don't have a very good memory because of it. I, I keep a lot of kind of memory books and memory boxes and I think that's why I'm so obsessive about it because I need to see something to remember something. For instance, I can't think about my boyfriend at work and see him at work and remember his smell. I can't remember smells or tastes until I smell or taste them and I know what they are. My partner, he's a paramedic and he has a lot of horrible jobs that he goes to and he says he doesn't want to burden me with telling me about them. But, I, you know, he can get off his chest with me because I can't imagine what, you know, horrific car crashes and things. He can tell me all the details. I can't imagine it. So I'm just there for him and it doesn't affect me at all. And it's, it's kind of great and horrible at the same time. You know, I, I worry about forgetting, you know, like my grandma passed away when I was 16 you know, I can't remember what she looks like unless I look at a picture of her. And it's it's awful for me because I want to be able to remember things like that. But at the same time, it's great because nothing really affects me on a really deep level. And I can kind of say, OK, that's happened. Brush myself off and get on with it because it does. I kind of don't get any flashbacks to it or. Yeah, it's it's really kind of amazing that people have full on images in their heads. But. I don't know. I try. <laughs> My name is Katie Hodgkins. I'm manager director of KBN Reptiles. I'm 31 years old. I like to craft in my spare time, so I make a lot of things to sell in the shop. Now, this is another thing I've always struggled with, this is making things because I can't imagine what they'll look like. But for some reason, I'm able to do it. But I make um, pictures out of snakeskin. So I've got my little craft room at home and I sit in there and, and I make all the things up. And I also do reptile themed jewellery. So like snake necklaces, snake earrings, lizards, frogs. When I was three years old, I held my first snake. I mean, it probably wasn't that big, actually, but to me, it was absolutely huge. He just put it on my lap and I just thought, this is amazing. It was so big and heavy and, and it, it was just amazing, like the power behind this animal and how gentle it was. I absolutely loved it. But I wasn't allowed any reptiles at home, so it wasn't until I was 16 and I went to college that I really got to really start working with them. I've been working with reptiles for kind of 12 years now, and it's, it's just amazing. I love it. It's one of the best things I've ever done. It really is. I, you know, I work seven days a week. I have two days off a year, and it's just my whole life. Snakes are gentle creatures. If you really take the time to take a step back and look at a snake properly, you can see the beauty in them and they're, they're very soft and as they're going through your fingers, you can feel all of the muscles moving under their skin and they'll kind of hold on to you a little bit. It's, it's quite comforting because they will hold on to you, almost like a child holds on to their parents, you know, and it feels like that because they're, they're holding on to you for, for protection and to keep them safe. I went out to a house where um, some people had just left this snake, turned off all the electrics, we had no heating, and he'd been starved for about 18 months, two years. He was, he was so thin. Oh, it was awful. The smell from all of the, the, the poo and the wee and stuff, and you think, oh God, is this gonna be alive? I mean, when, when I saw that this big boa, I, I was nearly sick. It was awful. It just breaks your heart. There was just nothing to him. 
you could see all of his bones. And when I picked him up, I mean, he was, a, he was an eight foot long snake, so he wasn't little. Um, but you had to scoop him up because all of his ribs were sticking into your hand. And he was so thankful. And he, you got him out and he'd just sit on you and he'd kind of snuggle into your arm. I've rehomed him with one of my friends now and he's the most loving snake you'll ever meet. I do feel I have more empathy with animals as a whole than people because I find people can be so horrible, you know, and, and I just, I don't know what it is. It's, I suppose animals don't really lie to you and keep secrets. Whereas people, people will quite happily lie to you. They'll quite happily hurt you. And animals, you, you get what, what's there. You, you know what you get with an animal. Whereas people can be very sly. I just don't trust a lot of people. You know, and, and you'll find that a lot with animal people. They will give their life up for an animal, but have a conversation with a human and they're like, oh, I'm not sure about that. I think the, the biggest turning point in my life was where I used to work and somebody wanted to buy a terrapin to put in with a bigger terrapin. It would be eaten, it, it would be killed in minutes. And I said no. You know, after a long conversation, my manager decided that yes, this turtle, this terrapin would go to this gentleman. And I just thought you're doing this all for the wrong reasons. And I didn't want to do that anymore. So I changed, I, I quit my job. It was a difficult decision to, to just leave my job. I'd had the opportunity to open up my own shop and, but I was a bit afraid, you know, it, it's a big thing. What if it fails? I won't be able to afford to live or feed my animals. Because at the time I had 75 reptiles at home in my living room. <laughs> but that was kind of the tipping point. And I, and I thought, I can't work for you anymore. And I can't add to the amount of reptiles or any animals being cared for incorrectly. I want to help people do better by animals and kind of, yeah, I just decided enough was enough and I wanted to do it my way or not at all. There was probably about 15 minutes after I handed it in I thought oh god what have I done and then kind of stuck to my guns I was like no nope, I've done the right thing I'm gonna do this I'm gonna make a go of it. After I handed my notice in I went and spoke to my parents because obviously <laughs> everyone's scared of their parents what they're gonna say and I was just like I've handed in my notice but they were very supportive and they helped me out here. They, they've come to work for me as volunteers. But yeah, I, I never imagined owning a shop would take up every, every part of your life. I don't get across very easily. Well, no, sorry, I don't show anger easily. We do a lot of health checks in the shop and you get some people and they bring in these lizards and they themselves have neglected them for at least a couple of years then because you're in your shop you have to be professional you can't just shout at these people as much as you'd love to and I think that's the hardest thing to try and not just shout at them you have to try and tell them in a without sounding patronizing or angry I think a lot of people struggle because I'm a girl as well like they'll listen to my dad they'll listen to my business partner but they don't listen to me because I mean especially when I opened the shop I was a lot younger so I was a young girl and they, they don't want to listen. They, they just assume because you're a girl, because you're young, you don't know what you're talking about. I've taught my dad everything he knows, but they'll listen to him over me every day. And it's, it's annoying. Katie's story was produced by Siobhan Harrison. Her shoes are part of a growing collection of footwear hosted by the Empathy Museum's A Mile In My Shoes exhibition. The shoes and stories come from all over the world. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram to find out where we are going next.